In the modern day, we constantly see new inventions that change the way we interact with media. Our senses of vision and hearing have recently been enhanced by virtual reality goggles and voice-activated personal assistants like Alexa and Jibo. Yet everyone's favorite sense, smell, or nose tasting, has gone practically untouched for decades. Why? Come with me and find out as I take you through the thrilling history of digital scent technology. Digital scent technology, or DST, as everyone in the industry calls it, refers to technology that allows us to sense, transmit, and receive scent-enabled digital media, such as movies, video games, and music. To understand DST, we must first look at a few attempts to introduce analog scent technology in the early 20th century. The first confirmed occurrence happened in 1929, when a New York City theater sprayed perfume from the ceiling during a performance of the Broadway Melody. In 1933, film producer Arthur Mayer installed an in-theater smell system in Paramount's Rialto Theater on Broadway. However, this had the major drawback of taking over an hour to clear any smells from the theater, and some smells would even linger for days afterwards. In 1940, a theater in Detroit, Michigan attempted to release scents timed to key points in the films The Seahawk and Boomtown. All of these early attempts at analog scent technology were unfortunately failures. They were done entirely by theater owners and not by the directors of the film, and therefore the audience could easily be distracted instead of focusing on what the director intended. Because of the huge size of these theaters, a lot of perfume had to be released. Uh, and this introduced another issue, which was that the human nose is not particularly sensitive and would have a hard time distinguishing smells until the previous one had been completely removed from the room. In 1939, a Swiss inventor by the name of Hans Lobb introduced a new system called Centivision at the New York World's Fair. This was the first digital scent technology. It used pipes connected to the individual seats in the theaters to release the smell, such that the timing and the amount of the smell could be carefully controlled by the projectionist using a control board. Although the New York Times reported in 1943 that Centovision is said to have produced odors as quickly and easily as the soundtrack of a film produces sound, Lobb returned to Switzerland in 1946, unable to interest any film or television studios with his invention. Fifteen years later, American film producer Mike Todd and his son, Mike Todd, were thinking of ways they could enhance their film around the world in 80 days. Mike Todd, who had been at the 1939 World's Fair in New York, remembered Hans Lobb's invention and decided not to use it in the movie. However, after Mike Todd's death, Mike Todd was so intrigued by the Centivision that he signed Hans Lobb to a movie deal. Over the last 15 years, Lobb had been improving the now renamed Smell-O-Vision. Instead of the sense being manually released, it used what was called a smell brain, which was a series of perfume containers linked on a belt, arranged in the order that they would be released. The belt was then wound around a motorized reel, and as the film threaded through the movie projector, markers on it would cue the brain. Needles would pierce membranes on the containers, releasing the scents, which would then be blown by fans through the pipes to individual vents underneath the audience members' seats. The minimum cost for outfitting a theater to accommodate the smell of vision was $15,000 at Chicago's Cine Stage Theater, which translates to $124,000 in today's money. Both Mike Todd and Hans Lobb understood the limitations of the smell of vision, and therefore had a movie specially written for its introduction, Scent of Mystery. In the movie, they use scents to reveal plot points. For example, the killer is identified by the smell of their pipe tobacco. So what was the reception to Scent of Mystery? Well, as you might have guessed, it wasn't great. smell vision did not work as intended. According to Variety, aromas were released with a distracting hissing noise, and audience members in the balcony complained that the scents reached them several seconds after the action was shown on screen. In other parts of the theater, the odors were too faint, causing audience members to sniff loudly in an attempt to catch the scent. These technical problems were mostly corrected after the first few showings, 
but the poor word of mouth in conjunction with generally negative reviews of the film itself signaled the end of smell vision The debut was so bad that despite only ever being used in one movie, a 2000 Time Reader survey listed smell vision in the top 100 worst ideas of all time. From the failure of smell vision in 1960 up until the early 2000s, there were really only two places that we saw scent technology being used. Scratch and sniff cards were an analog scent technology developed in 1965 by 3M that saw widespread use in advertisement. However, in homage to smell vision American film director John Waters released an enhanced version of his film Polyester in 1982 that included scratch and sniff cards the audience could use while watching the movie. Two years later, in 1984, a Six Flags theme park in Baltimore started showing what is regarded as the world's first commercial 40 film, The Sensorium. The movie included a multiple track discrete sound system, body sonic seats, and, you guessed it, Scentivision. Since the release of The Sensorium, theme parks have really become the home for digital scent technology, as they turn out to be the only places where the benefits to the system outweigh the novelty and the cost. Since the early 2000s, we've seen a rise in the number of ambitious startup companies who are trying to get involved in digital scent technology. In 1999, DigiSense developed a computer peripheral device called iSmell, which was designed to emit a smell when a user visited a website or opened an email. The device contained a cartridge with 122 primary odors, which could be mixed to replicate natural and man-made odors. DigiSense had indexed thousands of common odors which could be coded, digitized, and embedded into web pages or email. After $20 million in investment, DigiSense was shut down in 2001 when it was unable to obtain the additional funding it required. In 2003, Trisense launched a scent generating device called Scent Dome. This device was about the size of a teapot and could generate up to 60 different smells by releasing particles from one or more of 20 liquid filled odor capsules. Computers fitted with a scent dome unit use software to recognize smell identifying codes embedded in an email or web page. In 2004, Suji Wellness and France Telecom developed a scent generating device called Kaori Web, which comes with six different cartridges for different smells. The Japanese firm K Opticom had placed special units of this device in their internet cafes and other venues until the end of the experiment on March 20th, 2005. In 2010, Israeli company Scentcom featured a demo of their mobile-controlled scent generating device, although according to their website, as of 2018, it is still yet unreleased. In 2013, a group of Japanese researchers unveiled a prototype invention that they dubbed a smelling screen. The device combines a digital display with four small fans that direct an emitted odor to a specific spot on the screen. The fans operate at a very low speed, making it difficult for the user to perceive airflow. Instead, he or she perceives the smell as coming directly out of the screen. The latest attempt at commercializing digital scent technology is the Feel Real Sensory Mask. This device is designed to be worn in conjunction with a virtual reality headset and delivers one of nine smells directly to the user. Smells like jungle, ocean, and even burning rubber. Scent technology has always been seen as somewhat of a gimmick, and there's a few really good reasons for this. One is that humans' sense of smell is really just pretty terrible. Unlike with vision where we can look at a painting and distinguish individual colors at different parts of the painting, when we get a full whiff of different smells, it pretty much just all combines into one and we can't make any sense of it. This is a huge issue in any situation where you're trying to deliver smells to a big area because there's going to be no way to flush that smell out cleanly in between different scents. Another issue is cost. Smells can't be refueled and they can't be recharged, which means that you're relying on refills of scented oils to keep your smells going. This isn't such a big deal for big corporations like Disney and their theme parks, but it is a huge barrier for us getting any commercial product out there. The final problem is mankind's general lack of understanding of olfaction as a whole. Unlike light, unlike sound, unlike radiation, unlike all these other seemingly more complex natural phenomena, we do not yet have a good method of measuring smell. And as a result, we don't have a good method of studying smell. And so we don't really understand what it is that constitutes a smell. In conclusion, over the last century, we've seen a couple people who are really passionate about scent technology 
who are putting out these inventions, trying to push the envelope, take it to the next level, and the result has been failure every single time. Maybe we should give up. 